should Lux and Jarvan get married? Shivana wants a word with you next. <laughs> okay, let's see. Riot, is this a joke to you? <laughs> well, at this point, I pretty much oh, got up on the idea oh, that we will ever get oh, to win school. Oh, oh, okay. So instead, why don't we talk about what is happening with Lux's new comic? Yeah, honest, what is happening with it? I forgot about this comic coming out. <clears throat> but thank God it is already out. Because it actually gave us a really interesting point to talk about. So if you are a fan of Prince Jarvan, this video will be for you. The comic also spawned some hilarious memes. Check the central. When we talked about the comic in the latest episode of Rift News. Yeah, so this number, this is like the first comic of the five. Because the one I covered, like that was covered in that video, which had to do with Silas stuff, was the fourth one, I believe. Didn't know how much in the series. The story of the Masia forward. Well, after reading it, I am glad to say that what Ghost Scroller said. This year, you're going to see the timeline start to advance. Nice. True. But enough foreshadowing. Let's break this comic down into its important pieces. I'm more interested, like, that Ghost Lord is still involved with the story, even though he's supposed to be running the MMORPG stuff. And I'm also very happy that they said, like, about the MMORPG, they told him, like, just take as much time as you want to develop it. There's absolutely no rush. I love that they gave them, like, that freedom to make the best possible decisions that they can. That being said, I'm not saying Ghost Lord shouldn't be involved with, like, the League lore and stuff like that. Obviously, he should be, because that would implicate on the mrpg i'm more surprised that he's so directly involved like he should be in the know but i don't know if he should be like the one saying it's like oh yeah you're gonna you guys are gonna find out way more about the lore like on the masia it's gonna invest the story more and more and more it's like don't you have a game to develop <laughs> you know just like it was with the comic series war mother this comic series which is simply titled lux starts the same i definitely lost a bit of hair there shot is a scene from the future and in this case you can see that half of the masia is on fire mm. and if you've been keeping up with the story of the masia you know that it is likely because of silas i don't yeah. want to go through the entire story now because it is quite complicated but here's a short summary when the rune war started and the majority of rune terror was on fire people started looking for a safe place untouched by the wars yep one such place was magic the wars yeah these were woods that had the ability to absorb magic which means that in the age where mages ruled the world, no mage could even touch this place. So naturally, the Masia was founded here as a city that would protect common people from mages. Unfortunately, many years later, remembering the horrors of the Rune Wars, the Masia kept its anti-magic politics. So yeah. to this day, they still don't allow any practice of magic in their region. And anyone who was born with the ability to use magic was afflicted in the eyes of true Demasians. However, not everyone chose to be a mage. People are simply born with it. And that's how the Demacian Civil War started. The capital of Demacia, which funnily enough is simply called the Great City of Demacia, is focused on purging all magics from their lands. The way I see it, the reason it was called the Great City of Demacia was probably because there was only the city of Demacia and they just called Demacia. But then as they expanded their territory and their influence, they just called it also Demacia. It's not that... Demacia, the nation of Demacia was unoriginal with the name of their first city. It's more like that they named the the territory of the first city by the city, right? So it's like, if anything, like the territory name is the unoriginal one, but the name of the city is the name is the original. <laughs> Regardless the circumstances, while the common citizens of Demacia simply want to live in peace. The irony yeah. in Silas is that he is a mage that has the ability to see other mages. So when he was a child, he was used by the Demacian military to seek out the afflicted. So in the end, Demacia was using magic to purge magic. Yeah. Unfortunately, during one of his missions, Silas couldn't control his magic, and he killed an innocent child. That's how the service to Demacia ended. The final straw that finally started all this mess was that during Silas' service in Demacia, he learned how many high-ranked Demacians are actually also mages in hiding. But while they lived on a high horse, the less fortunate mages were locked in chains and thrown into exile. Yep. This injustice made Silas break out of his prison and bring real justice into the lands of Demacia. And by uniting all the outcast mages, he effectively split the people of Demacia in half. And uh, like I said, Silas, in my opinion, even though his first cause was good, I feel like he would just need any cause to be bad, to be like evil. 
right? If it wasn't this, even if like the nobility wasn't on their high horse, he would probably still cause the same thing. It's it's regardless of the hypocrisy, he would still probably cause the damage that he wants to cause. All right, it's he's just wants. He's just like he becomes more and more evil the more you hear about him. Like right now, he's not like you know world domination, the, blow up the world, but. I feel like his story will get to that point, not necessarily blow up the world, but I feel like Silas would be, a, like I said in a different video, as a fantastic raid boss, especially because he can absorb and like use the magic that is absorbed by uh, the uh, the tree material that they use, uh, the parasite thing. I keep forgetting the name, but because he can use the power of uh, that the armors and the walls and like all that shit that absorbs the trees are absorbing the rune powers right now like the rune the world rune powers so i imagine at some point he would be able to use that power and that would be like catastrophic and that would be a massive raid encounter probably and this comic Dallas is pretty bad he makes a deal with failure to invade so yeah so again on its own, the way you said, that's not necessarily evil because in his mind, like you can view it this way, in his mind, Demacia is evil because of the hypocrisy that like mages are bad in Demacia and he just wants to free the mages. That way his goal would be good, right? The problem is, he's. it feels more like he's using that goal in order to justify him being bad. If that makes sense, right? He just he he would be bad regardless of that, right? He would be an uh, a villain regardless of that. Like that's just the, the justification right now. But you he would find even when if let's say Demacia will be like you know what we're okay with mages now everything is cool mages can live here freely not a problem. Silas is the type of guy who would probably look for another reason to attack Demacia or just cause damage. Right, like that's what I feel like Silas type character would do. He just wants to be bad. You know, he just wants to be the villain. Right, I, it feels like that's what they're going for. Because right now, him allying with Freljord to attack Demacia, it still technically makes sense based on, you know, based on what he wants. He wants freedom for the mages in Demacia, right? Like, so he, he's using Freljord for his own game. But I feel like that's just an excuse because he just wants to kill the Masians at this point because of the inhumane. Like he's turning, he's becoming the evil that he hates. He's like the way that he wants to feed uh, Jarvan for the rat, right? Because uh, the prisoners were treated like that. It's not like Jarvan 4 was there forcing it. He just didn't stop it and he probably didn't even know the treatment that they're getting. He wants to kill all the mass. He doesn't really care about other mages. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's just using the other mages as a as an excuse to to basically do that. To just wants to kill the Masians, right? It's like he would use any excuse he can find just to do that. So he doesn't even care. And that's why I'm saying, like, if he starts, he if he gets to the power of the world runes that are being absorbed by the trees because Rise, for some reason, decide to hide in there, which would make sense. He's like, oh, they they prevent the power from leaking, all that stuff. But these trees are absorbing the power of the world runes. If Silas gets a hold of that, because he he will be able to probably um, use the tree's power in and uh, fuck. Uh, how how did they describe it? Basically, he can he can use the power of uh, the material that absorbs the magic. So he'll be able to use the world runes, and then then shit goes south. Greatly expands this civil war. So let's have a look at what we actually learned from it. After the initial shot of Future Demacia, the story of this comic actually starts weeks before that. At the mm -hmm. very beginning. Garen shows Lux that the crest of the Crown Guard family gives them the freedom to do pretty much anything in the city. This could be one of the reasons why the teaser for this comic was the Crown Guard Eagle, an emblem that plays a bigger part here. In any case, just the fact that Lux doesn't know the weight of her family name yet tells us that this story happens directly after Lux's updated bio. That is right after she traveled to the capital with her parents to see Garen become a member of the Dauntless Vanguard. It is also after Lux joined the Illuminators. Remember that the recent update changed the Illuminators. 
They are now a Illuminati. dedicated to helping the poor and the sick. Anyway, right after Garen showed Lux what being a crown guard means, the conversation between them. I always this is like doesn't really have much to do with the story, but like I always doubt the people or like the groups that say we just wanna help the weak and the poor and all that stuff. There's a great example in the movie, um what was it called? Uh it's like uh was it Robin Hood? I think it was in the Robin Hood movie where the guy who was pretending to like help all these people to get recognition from the people and eventually like he was promoted to like the sheriff, which is basically like the main uh villain of the Robin Hood story. He was promoted to the sheriff. He eventually says that it's like I didn't work so hard helping all these like weaklings to not be in the position of power, right? So it's like all these like um virtuous and like uh charitable um what do you call it uh, organizations that's always what I view them for what I view them at even though they're like they're doing good I feel like there's always a hidden agenda of like them being prof like their profit and stuff like that you know how come like every um I don't know what they're called, but like let's say CEO of a, a non, what do you call them? Uh, organization, a non-profit organization. How come they're always so rich? You know, it's like I thought it was for no profit. Why aren't you donating all your money for all these people who you're trying to help? You know, it's like there's always a hidden agenda. Then was interrupted by a female mage who escaped her prison. While Lux followed her wake and she helped those who were injured. Garen was determined to stop the mage, even at the price of I said help mage. When they finally stopped the mage, Garen's a very good person, but his family, namely his aunt, make bad decision. I would say Garen is blindly good. So in Garen, there's like I wouldn't say I would say Lux is a very good person. Garen is a very black and white person. There's like on and there's off. Villain, no matter what, is villain. Even if, like, there's another saying. Even though in one of the... The previous story, where he went to where his uncle's... Uh, like, where his uncle was the lord or whatever. And that city sided with Noxus. That was, like, the only time I've seen him not be pure black and white. But that was, I think that's a character development. Because even in the Lux story with Nocturne... She explains to Garen not everything is black and white. So I'm assuming he's growing out of it. But yeah, there's a chance that the aspect of Justice Kale influences his action. I would say yeah. Yeah. Especially like how Kale just fucking went crazy, killed her dad. Because her dad, she considered him evil for taking the daughters away from the mother. She's like, bro. Like, <laughs> it's like, the fuck? <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, could be that uh, the influence came from the aspect of Justice. But also, you could see that the aspect of justice chose him to because he was being like that there was like there's justice and there's like villainy you know there's good and there's evil there's nothing in between so maybe the aspect of justice chose him because of his belief and this might actually trigger a change in his abilities to use the power of aspect of justice later because he might uh find that the gray area between good and evil which can actually affect um, the influence of uh, the aspect of justice. Again, something that the story might explore. I don't know, but uh, it's some. It's it's cool. I love seeing characters developing in that way. There's where they think it's like it's all good and evil, and then they realize there's a gray area. Each two interesting things happened. Lux saw that the mage didn't even want to hurt anyone, and she began yeah. questioning the Marcian laws. The second thing is that this is the first time we saw what a mage seeker looks like. In the story, they were always described as mage hunters wearing blue cloaks and silver half masks. They also often carried a grey mark, which is a stone petricide disc that would absorb magic. It was a protection against mages. But as far as I can see, the grey mark wasn't actually revealed here. Anyway, mm -hmm. after the mage was captured, Garen and Lux continued their ride through the city. And since Garen noticed that Lux was questioning the laws of the Masia, he reminded her the horrors of the Rune Wars. And he told her that without their laws, some individuals such as the mass murderer Silas of Dragborn would consume their nation. 
Unfortunately, every time Lux feels nervous or uneasy, her light goes out of control. And Yeah, see what I mean? Like, this part, right? Which is like, there's no exception. It's like, good and evil. There's nothing in between. It's like, people who are born with magic and shit like that. So that's why I said Lux is the actually, like, the only good character. Like, pure good. Meanwhile, Garen is just too straightforward right it's like it's too much like black and white but uh yeah is that mass murder recent enough and it's like he doesn't even come to realize that's like the reason silas oh aside from him being probably like an just an evil guy but the reason someone like silas is born is because of the loss right every time lux feels nervous or uneasy her light goes out of control and when her hand began mm. to glow she tried to hide it but she wasn't sure if Garen saw it. Maybe he was just pretending he didn't see it. To break the silent tension, Lux asked Garen what happens to all the books the Mage Seekers find. And Garen revealed that all the books are locked in the Mage Seekers Keep. It serves as a massive library of all magic. But only those in the service of the crown may enter. So naturally, since Lux was on a quest to master her own abilities, mm -hmm. this library was of interest to her. So hours later, she decided to visit that place. Trying the same trick Garen showed her earlier, Lux pulled out the crown guard crest and she was allowed entry. The guard who let her in introduced himself as Jaredin, which I am pretty sure is a cameo to the lead narrative writer, because mm. otherwise this scene would be just a random introduction. Yeah, Jaredin basically. <laughs> also wanted to tell Lux about the incident that happened in this library, but Lux dismissed him, so we will never learn what happened here. Anyway, when the guard returned to his post outside, Lux began exploring the library. In the next scene, we see Garen talking to his aunt, Diana. This is where things get really interesting. Also, if you've got a fetish for broad shoulders, this might be a dangerous scene for you. We oh, wait, so the... She's basically the king's personal guard. I didn't even realize she was his aunt, their aunt. Oh. I was like, who the fuck is Diana all the time? Like, they mentioned, like, I know it's, like, her role, but it's, like... I didn't know that she was, like... <laughs> <laughs> They're fucking family. We know Diana Crown Guard from the stories of both Lux and Garen. She's essentially taking the place. Which actually makes sense. Crown Guard. Isn't that like the fam like isn't that Garen's last name? <laughs> their parents in the Damascus. Uh so dumb. You may also remember her from the Yeah, there she is. Yeah. She's the right hand of the king. In this scene, she and Garen are talking about Lux. And more importantly, they both Yeah, know I'm just dumb. <laughs> Garen told Diana that he's afraid that one day Lux will say the wrong thing to the wrong person and yeah. all she is is going to be revealed. And at that point, Garen wouldn't be able to protect her anymore. That's when Diana offered a solution. She heard that Garen's friend, Prince Jarvan, wanted to get married. And if Jarvan were to marry Lux, she would be untouchable. No one would dare to accuse her of anything. At the end of this scene, Garen says that mm. he will go to the palace tomorrow, probably to discuss the marriage. This is the last time we see Garen in this comic, so we can assume this plot will be continued in the next issue. And remember, this comic has five issues in total. Personally, I really hope that Lux gets married to Prince Jarvan. This would be honestly the best way to push the story forward. And we would finally see some progression in characters. I would love to see Lux slowly evolve. I don't know if I want to see them, like, knowing where the story is going. I don't think, I don't, like, I don't even know what happened between, but it's like, I feel like Jarvan would be way more preoccupied with everything else knowing what happens within these five comics books. <laughs> it's like there's no way he's looking for a wife when his dad just fucking died and uh, Silas is uh, at large and shit like that. He's like, the last thing I need is to get married. I need to kill this motherfucker. <laughs> Let alone, he. I don't know if he knows she's a mage. He probably doesn't know she's a mage, but like... Probably a bad time to get married to some guy who currently has, even though he's probably not out there hunting all the mages, he probably has a bad taste in his mouth regarding mages at this moment in time, right? So it's like probably not the best time to get married. Mage to the queen of the but develop. Well, I'm just fucking like, why am I even starting the video if I keep pausing? But I feel like this is a hint for like the future substantially like in the future like pretty far off though honestly i always thought they they should probably get married even before all of this just knowing that garen and jarvin are like best friends and shit like that and he's the crown prince right 
It would be awesome to see Jarvan IV as a powerful warrior king, with a mage queen by his side. With this combination, there would be an infinite potential for story development in Demacia. Everything would be in line with the ongoing civil war, and what makes Demacia unique would still be there. Those who hate mages would beg Jarvan to make Demacia great again, and all the mages in hiding would- Make Demacia great again, you're gonna wear the, I guess, golden caps, make Demacia great again. MDGA. <laughs> and both sides would try to turn Lux and <laughs> Midga against each other. The amount of plot twists in this storyline would be incredible. I really hope this storyline goes through. But it's more. It's right this is my biggest problem with monarchy. At the end of the day, the king's like say is the king's say. I don't. I don't really know what kind of pressure Jarvan the Third was under to grant the mage seekers so much power that it caused this all of the nobles because here's the thing the only pressure for the king would probably be the nobles all of the alliances that demacia has they are okay with mages all of the nobles that pretty much all of the nobles have mages in their family what kind of pressure was put on jarvan to keep the or like the whole order of no mages uh, allowed to the point where they would go like um super ham on with the mage seekers and just completely take away kids from their families who have like any magical power like any like se semblance of mana right it's like i'm that is the only part that's kind of confused to me where did that pressure come from the citizens are okay with mages Right, because like they don't want their kids to be taken away. Uh, the nobles should be okay with mages because they have mages in their family, right? It's like I just don't understand where this whole like I guess I I get that it is uh, their culture and their their uh, tradition all that stuff, but it's like as the king you can lessen the urgency to solve this problem. Right, and slowly migrated into their normal society of mages, like to have mages, because everyone has a mage relative or some shit like that, especially when it came to no nobility who had like tens and 20, 30 fucking relatives. So that's the only fear thing that's like so weird for me. I'd like to avoid majorly changing characters, with the only exception being Gangplank, who was getting a rework. I am afraid that Wright might pull off The Simpsons, and everything will return to the normal state at the end. And honestly... Some of it is Noxus being a huge threat, they use a lot of magic. But that won't stop Demacia... Like, th that is... Having mages in Demacia would actually be in their benefit overall. I, what, what I think you're saying, which probably what you're saying is... This will this prevents Noxus infiltrators like magic in, magical infiltrators, magician infiltrators in Demacia because they can still detect them. But that didn't stop LeBlanc from infiltrating as well, right? Also, they are still protected by all the magic absorbing trees and like their walls that absorb magic and stuff like that uh, in their city. So it's like I don't really see why Demacia is so adamant against mages except for the fact that it was born like the masia was made to avoid the rune wars that feels like that's the only reason that the masia is still against mages even though everyone their sister in the masia has a relative that is a mage that's like the only thing that's kind of like still bothering me and i guess i it might be like the whole like a uh, traditional thing which is like this is what our country or like our state was founded on so we're not going to change it even if i am king stuff like that it, this cannot be changed maybe that's the reasoning but i feel like that's such a bad reasoning overall especially when you see like the damage it causes to your people hard to say you know i'm i'm not a king but i feel like if your people are not happy, like you're gonna have a problem on your hands. You or your son, whoever will be the king when the problem actually like builds up enough. We need those twists. We need to see characters changing and reacting to the world. Yeah. Now back to the story. Yeah. While Garen and Diana were discussing the future of Demacia, Luck studied magic in the Mage Seekers Library. She read the magic books for hours, but there was nothing that would tell her about the deadly beams of light. 
So instead, she decided to explore the rest of the Maid Seeker's Keep. And the deeper she explored, the creepier things got. When she finally reached the catacombs, she was stopped by two guards. But just like every person in the capital, they allowed her to go through when they learned she was a crown guard. Because these catacombs were dangerous for normal visitors, Lux had to be escorted <laughs> by the warden of this prison. He explained that they kept all the people waiting for their trials here. Some of them would be proven innocent, but most of them... Yeah, look at this shit. When they reached a staircase that would take them even lower, the warden tried to tell Lux that there is nothing important there. But nevertheless, Lux... It's a kind of minority opinion to like mages in Demacia. Oh, no, it is. I'm just saying I don't understand. It's not... I wouldn't even call it a minority. I would say it's... Uh, it might even be a silent majority. Because, for example, the story where they brought the mage over from the neighboring... Uh, whatever it is, lordship. The people there were mad at the mage seekers, not at the mage. Like, the whole village they went through wanted to kill one of the mage seekers because he was the one who took a child from his mother in that village. So essentially that whole village is a mage sympathist. Sym sympathist. Yeah, whatever. Right? So it's like they it's not that they like mages, but they don't hate mages. And again, if the nobility doesn't hate mages because they have mages in their family, right? So I would say it's more of a silent silent majority that are probably okay with mages. No one would want to see their family here in the, in these cells just because they were born with magic, right? Especially, and nobles would definitely not, this would never happen to a noble. So that's what I'm saying, which is like, it's weird, right? And the thing is, right now, Demacia is not portrayed as uh, a nation that is just like, we are here to control the people, right? I would understand from a nation point of view if they're like, we just want to control our people, uh, give them less rights and all that stuff. Then I'd be like, okay, that now it makes sense. But so far, the king it looks like he's he wants to help the people. He's like he looks like a good king. I mean, heck, he took Xin Zhao, who's just like a nobody, right? Just took him and he became like a, a massive supporter. There's been no talk of like the uh, the monarchy itself being corrupt or anything like that. Maybe some nobles, but for the most part. No one came out to be like necessarily evil and like hate, like don't care about human lives or using human lives as like just labor and workforces and like they don't, they shouldn't have rights. So aside from that aspect, I don't see any reason for them to view mages that way, right? Especially like with how many mages they have uh, in their vicinity. I just wanted to know what the mage seekers were hiding. And when they reached the lower levels, things got even worse. People in the lower cells were tortured in an attempt to cure their affliction. One example we got is purification by the patricide elect. Javan would have been good towards mages, but his dad got murdered. He was good towards Shivana. Yeah, yeah. Javan is definitely going to be in a very conflicted state from now on. That's why I said, like, him marrying Lux anytime soon is not going to happen. He needs to get, like, his rage against mages calmed down, and that might take a few years for sure. Right, because he right now blames all mages, not just Silas. Right, I'm sure it's not like he goes out and just like find every mage and kill them. He's not to that point of rage, but he definitely is like if you're a mage, he's like right away like you're like you're a danger kind of thing. Right, he's not actively looking for them, but he's actively wary of them. Which you may actually remember from the old version of Lex's story. Originally, when her parents found out what she was, they called an alchemist to try and cleanse her in secret. And their last resort was a petricide elixir. This concoction was infused with petricide, and it would yeah. literally rip magic from your body. Petricide, but that's the word. born with magic, it is in your veins. So we can only imagine the pain it would cause to someone affected by magic. Either way, we can see its use in this comic. At this point, Lux saw almost everything the mage seekers kept here. Only one massive heavily guarded door remained. When they approached this door, the warden insisted that they couldn't open it for her. It was the first time he said no to her. And you need to remember that talking back to a crown guard could be considered an insult to the crown. So Lux knew there was something very important behind it. Something the king or anyone around him... See what she says here? This is probably the most uh, important part of this. And this is why I'm saying like, it's like I don't understand. Um, I feel like the king doesn't know what ha what is happening. Like he, like no king knows all the nitty gritty and like 
stuff like this, right? But here's the thing, right? My family has defended the crown for generations. My brother risks his life in the vanguard. My aunt is a high marshal to the king. And I'll bet none of them know about what you have got going on here, right? I don't know. Maybe the aunt knows. She, she seems like she would be okay with it because uh, she's very, like, super strict, even more than Garen. Garen would not be okay with this. Garen is okay with, like, okay, we'll kill this guy, but I don't think he's okay with abuse, right? So that's why I'm saying... Um, what's it called? I don't feel like they know the damage that they're causing with the with what they're doing. Didn't know about. So Lux forced the warden to open the door so she could investigate. Yeah. Now, before we jump into the final scene of this comic, Why? we need to stop for a second. Why? Honestly, I don't mind the slight change in the art style compared to War Mother. Okay. But this face says it all. I think we got a new meme on our hands. <laughs> I tried to Pikachu. But I don't think I need to. As I said, <laughs> I am here for the story more than the art. And again, yeah, this guy. in my opinion, it is I feel fine, the art is totally but fine. Yeah. Guys are interested in a take on the art. TB Sky has a video where he dives deeper into. I mean, the reason this art is so different from this is because this is about war and this is about politics, realistically, right? So it's like definitely the art style would be very different. This just fits the story, like this thing this scene could not be covered like this it doesn't make sense and you would notice like when i think it was like in the later uh comics they look very different like not necessarily the art is like not super different but it uh, takes a lot more serious tone this looks like more of a uh i won't say cartoonish necessarily but a less serious tone because the subject already is extremely serious whereas this one is war right this one is just politics Anyways. i'm here for the story more than the art and again in my opinion it is totally fine but if you guys are interested in a take on the art tb sky has a video where he dives deeper into what happened here i am not an artist so my opinion wouldn't have that much value anyway let's jump into the final scene the warden decided to let lux in but no one else behind that heavily guarded door was a massive cell a cell that contained Silas, the legendary mass murderer. I'm not really sure if none of the Crown Guard really know he is here. After all, everyone knows who Silas is. So naturally, all the officers would also know where he is. So even though Lux thought that no one probably knew what the Mage Seekers were hiding here, yeah. in the end, it is likely that only Lux didn't know. I don't... Well, they probably knew that Silas was here. Garen already talked about Silas, so he definitely knows what's going on. But I don't think they know, especially Garen doesn't know about the abuse that's happening here. He knows that they're probably imprisoned, but he's not. he doesn't know the nitty-gritty stuff of what going what goes on in that prison. That's not something he's interested in. commenting on Lux's abilities. He can see what Lux truly is. And he sees the irony in her being free while he is locked in there. This is the end of the first issue, and I can already tell you, it feels like this was a better setup for the story moving mm -hmm. forward than the first issue of War Mother. I think it could be because War Mother had a lot of characters that we didn't know, but here we already know all the big characters. Yeah. The Masia has a massive potential right now, oh, and yeah. especially with the new storyline of Lux and Jarvan. Again, I really hope that Riot isn't afraid of change and they go for it. This might be our first massive change to the world of Runeterra. Once we see some real political games being played in Runeterra, we'll know we are on a good path. Even though this is it for this video, let me leave you with the cover art of the second issue of the Lux series. Uh -huh. And please, don't take this picture out of context. <laughs> fucking guy. Alright, uh, I don't know what happens with 2 or 3, I just know that eventually he escapes, causes the whole rebellion thing. I believe he escapes in 2. In 3 he convinces... Um... He convinces more people to side with the cause. In four, there's the whole, the actual rebellion. Five, I believe, is just the aftermath. So, yeah. I, you know, basically kind of like how I, I would expect it to happen. Uh, but, yeah. Well, two, he trains her and he escapes at the end. Probably that's what happens. Three is after he escapes. Uh, and leading up to attacking Demacia. Four is the attack on Demacia. King dies. That would be the end. And then five would be the aftermath. But yeah, anyways, that's it for Demacia for sure this time. For sure. Okay, anyways, let's go next.